In fact, we inhale an average of 10 tablespoons of dust each year, which doesn't cause a problem for most people. What can be a problem is the microscopic plants and animals that lurk in household dust. Molds, mildew, fungi, and bacteria that trigger allergic reactions in millions of people. These hidden house guests are well known to Harvard biologist Harriet Burge. We share our houses with a whole microscopic population that we can't see. And they live in the dust, they live on the surfaces of our countertops, uh, they live on our skin and fall off of our skin into the dust. And every time you breathe, you're inhaling all those dust particles. They get into your nose and your throat and your lungs. So Moser took her samples to a laboratory. And what she learned is that inside a common dust ball, there's a jungle of hundreds of exotic flora and fauna. We can see bacteria, we can see mold growing, we can see insect parts, we can see insect feces. And those are the kinds of things that can cause problems for us if we breathe too much of it. Since Penny Moser did her first exploration, scientists have learned a lot more about dangers concealed in ordinary house dust. There are two classes of things in dust that can be considered dangerous. The first and the ones that I'm most interested in are the allergens. Uh, and these include fungal spores that produce allergens, uh, dust mites, cockroaches, cat dander, dog dander, mouse, mouse urine, things of that sort. relative of the spider called the dust mite. Scientists believe the dust mite is the number one culprit in indoor allergies. Dr. Daniel Ein is one of the leading experts on dust mite allergies. After hearing this patient's symptoms, Dr. Ein suspects the cause is dust mites and orders a skin test. We've known that dust was a problem for allergic people for many, many years, but it was about 10 or 15 years ago that researchers were able to pinpoint the dust mite as the major cause of allergic problems in dust. And with that understanding uh, came a whole different approach to treating dust mite problems and dust allergies. Dust mites make their home in your bed, on your mattress and pillow. The average mattress has up to two million dust mites. And if you have an old pillow, 25% of its weight could be dust and dust mites. We have sampled uh, easy chairs and family rooms where uh, we have found uh, about 18,000 mites in the equivalent of about a teaspoon of dust. The reason they like beds, pillows, and living room couches is simple. That's where they find their food. Dust mites live on dead skin particles that we shed. It has been estimated that we shed 400,000 particles or skin scales per minute just sitting. So even if we're a couch potato, we produce a great deal of dust. The skin scales then become part of this dust ball that we might find under our bed. And mold starts growing on the skin scales, and then dust might start feeding on the mold. And so dust goes into dust, and dust begets dust, and the cycle goes on. So the mites hang out in the same place as we do, waiting to feast off our shedding skin. These mites live in human dwellings because we provide them with the climatic conditions and the food that they uh, require. They all require a fairly high humidity in order to survive in, in homes. In order to flourish, the relative humidity must be above uh, 60 percent. Here's a mating pair, a female dragging uh, a male around. 
move the dish off the In his search to understand the mite, here. Dr. Arlian so takes a hands-on approach. Put my finger under the scope. See them scurrying around on the surface of my skin? Now, there's one crawling over a hair. Letting them crawl on my finger here, in among the, uh, the hairs on my finger, is somewhat analogous to uh, they're living in the fibers of a, of a carpet. Uh, they crawl through the fibers and uh, up and down in their normal daily activity as they uh, reproduce and uh, search for food. Luckily for humans, dust mites are not parasites. They're not interested in live skin, just dead skin scales that flake off. If they were parasites that fed directly off our bodies, we'd be overwhelmed by their numbers. But what is it about dust mites that an estimated 20 million people are so allergic to? Dr. Arlian has established that dust mite feces contain at least 15 different proteins that cause allergic reactions in humans. To make things more complicated, each allergy sufferer has a unique reaction, like a fingerprint, to different combinations of the 15 proteins. Some individuals may react to three or four of that pool of 15, uh, and another individual may react to uh, another set of five or six of those. And some of them are more potent allergens for specific individuals than, than others. So Dr. Arlian and his team are trying to isolate each of the problem proteins. Then they'll create a concentrated extract of each one, which allergists can use to diagnose and treat patients. Once you've identified that it's the dust mite that's the problem, you can take countermeasures against the dust mite, and hence uh, the understanding of humidity and its role in dust mite procreation, uh, the, uh, the role of uh, where the dust mites are in your mattresses and so on. This is what they look like. And what, what they um, feed off are the skin that we shed from our bodies and also on certain kinds of molds and other things. Do they get bigger? Do they get bigger? No, no, but they, they don't get big enough so that it's easy for you to see, no. Their excretions are the size of pollen grains. Okay. They get into the air and they get, you breathe them in and that's what sets up the allergic reactions. They live in your pillows and your mattresses, but there are special covers you can put on your pillows and mattresses that keep the dust mite and their excretions inside. This is a picture of the dust mite. I don't want you to get upset about this, but they're really pretty ugly. They look like they're from out of space.